The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully qualified will be like their teacher. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye, but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, Friend, let me take out the speck in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your neighbor's eye. No good tree bears bad fruit. Nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each new tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. Out of the treasure, out of the good treasure of the heart, the good person produces good. And out of evil treasure, the evil person produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. As we are about to begin this season of Lent in a few days, I'm sure you all know that this past Thursday, the Russian military has invaded Ukraine. As if a two years and counting global pandemic was not enough, now we have this. And I'm sure some of you are wondering, what can we as Catholics, as followers of Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace, what can we as people of faith, what can we do about this? There are things being done at levels at which we have little to no involvement. Things like, on a national level, such as economic sanctions, financial assistance, taking in refugees. Good. Then there are things that are a little more within our reach, like supporting reputable financial and humanitarian aid organizations in their work to help those affected in various ways by this war that has begun in Ukraine. Certainly, that could be something to consider for your almsgiving this Lent. But there is one thing which is entirely within the reach of each and every single one of us here today, no matter what our financial situation may be. It is the season of Lent, beginning with this Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. Earlier this past week, Pope Francis had asked all the faithful, including you and me, to make this Ash Wednesday a day of prayer and fasting for peace. He said, I encourage believers in a special way to dedicate themselves intensely to prayer and fasting on that day, that is Ash Wednesday. May the Queen of Peace preserve the world from the madness of war. Perhaps in the past, you may have thought of Lent, maybe our entire Catholic faith, or even spirituality, as a more or less individual affair, like a kind of private hobby or interest. I certainly did, and still struggle to avoid this mentality in me at times. But I think now we find ourselves face to face with a reminder, with a wake-up call, to the fact that this, that it is not, and has never been the case, with any authentic spirituality. Being a Catholic, being a follower of Jesus Christ, simply being a human being, is not and can never be a truly private affair. As Father Murray so often reminds us, we live relationship, and we breathe relationship. We were born in relationship. We were made for relationship. So why should we think that our living out this 
relational dimension of our lives and of our faith would be limited only to material things. If we can share with and support people materially, why can't we share with and support people spiritually? We are certainly more aware these days of the impact that mental health has on people's lives. Not only do people need to eat and need to have adequate warmth and shelter, they also need their spirits to be kept up. They need to be able to hold on to hope. They need to sometimes just simply make it through the day. And we believe in a very real way that we are all connected and that we can actually help each other. As St. Paul says in his letter to the Corinthians, we heard a number of Sundays ago in our second reading, when he was talking about how we are all members of the body of Christ. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice with it. Whether we recognize it or not, we are connected. We are in relationship. Those of you of a certain age may remember hearing this phrase, offer it up. For some, perhaps this was communicated to you like a kind of Catholic way of saying, quit your complaining. But that is a sad cheapening of the deep meaning these words really have. A deep meaning so important right now that the people who stand to benefit from our doing this need us to remember it and to recommit to it. And I know that you get it. It has always made a deep impression on me to see your faith whenever something concerning happens, when someone passes away, those prayer intentions you immediately add to our prayer network, those mass intentions you immediately request. So I know that you know and believe these things. I know that you know and believe in the power of prayer. And so all I'm saying is, let's take what we believe and apply it to our present situation. Whatever prayer, fasting, and almsgiving or acts of charity you are planning to do this Lent, consider. Consider offering it, certainly for peace in our world, but in a special way, please consider offering what you do this Lent for those who are living in the midst of and affected by this ongoing invasion of Ukraine. Everything we do this Lent, even personal things like purifying ourselves from the spiritual blindness in our lives that Jesus is warning us about in today's Gospel, which, by the way, only really happens through prayer, fasting, and charity anyways, even things like that that we are in a sense doing for ourselves, we can make them benefit ourselves and others by the simple act of making the intention to offer whatever it is to God for the benefit of those who are suffering. God, I am going to offer you all the things I'm going to do this Lent for these intentions. It's as simple as that. And if you're like me, maybe sometimes you need a little extra motivation to stick with your Lenten observances. Well, how about this? Because God never overlooks even the slightest flicker of our goodwill. God never overlooks even the slightest movement of charity in our hearts. We heard both in our first reading and in our gospel that a tree is known by its fruits. Some of the things we do, it won't be until the end of time, at the last judgment, that we will at last see how God made our Lenten observances this year bear fruit in the lives of people going through these difficult times. But even if we don't see it now, they will still benefit from our prayers, from our fasting, from our acts of charity and almsgiving done for them. It's no different from offering material support. You don't always see that either. But you know people do benefit from it. And they need our support, both materially and spiritually. Our opening prayer on Ash Wednesday will begin with Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service. Lent is a campaign of Christian 
service. It's not a private spirituality, if there ever was such a thing. So perhaps you've already thought about what you're going to do for Lent. Good. But have you thought about who you're going to do it for? I invite you to consider this. And when you've decided, then hear the encouragement God wants to bless our resolutions with. From the words of St. Paul in our second reading today. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain.